Okay, so we have an interesting day for you today. The goal is to use the bad boy tractor to move the Palomino Paws travel trailer over next to the garage. So let's see if, uh, if this bad boy can move that bad boy. If you haven't subscribed to my other channel, BTBRV Life, uh, and you want to see updates on things like how the tractor's been performing, how the Toro's been performing, that thing's got like 150 hours on it, um, how the Skag's been, or any of the other equipment we've had out here, including a lot of the battery-powered stuff, definitely take a moment, subscribe to that. It's BTBRV Life. I'll put a description in the video um, here. So you can, I'll put a link in the description of this video if you guys want to check that out. Let's start this thing up. We have 51.9 hours, 60 hours on the bad boy. Okay, so the first thing we got to do is pull the hitch out, or at least the uh, the portion that will go inside of the receiver. I got a two inch receiver here on the tractor. Uh, this is gonna be interesting. Let me come around here so you can kind of see a, a size difference between the bad boy tractor and this Palomino Paws. This thing is absolutely massive and it's relatively heavy from a dry weight perspective. Even though, you know, it's pretty much aluminum with some foam, some composites inside of it. I mean, pretty much all of the frame is aluminum, uh, aluminum cabinetry, all the stuff that might be normally steel or wood and heavy is aluminum and lightweight. Yet, because they've built this thing so dang well, it's still heavy. And I guess that's kind of the point that I always like to make when I'm talking about fifth wheels and travel trailers and how, you know what, you know, the more I guess the more quality, the more robustness, the more strength you put into one, the heavier it's going to get by magnitude simply by adding some of that stuff. Again, all aluminum frame, yet this thing still weighs like 7,400 pounds dry. Has a gross vehicle weight rating of like 9,900, right under 10,000 pounds. Which again, means how heavy this is. Imagine if they had the, the steel frame that a lot of people want fifth wheels or travel trailers to have where, you know, it's, it's half inch thick or three quarters inch thick or even quarter inch thick. So yeah, you know, being strong, being robust, being super, super capable often means being pretty heavy. Anyways, yeah, you can see the, uh, the bad boy is tiny compared to this thing because the bad boy is even tiny compared to the, the Denali pickup truck. Yet, um, it can move this around. So it's going to be really interesting to see what the actual tongue weight on this unit is. Um, but something to keep in mind, when they put all of the Battleborn and the Victron battery charging systems in, it's all in the back of this unit, which is important to note because it's going to definitely impact weight and balance. But you can see the axles on this unit sit kind of far back and there are tandem axles or technically there's four independent suspension portions. There's not any solid axles on this unit but um, it still does transfer some of the weight to the back. But we're gonna hitch up to it, the bad boy. And let me show you specifically the type of hitches that, uh, that are optioned with this, whether you get this from Palomino or you get it from the folks over at ROA Off-Road uh, in South Carolina who sell this, as well as the hitch upgrades and a lot of other things that they can do to customize it. When this was delivered to me, you can see it looks like it has some dirt and stuff here. This is because this was drugged through a snowstorm. And the transportation guy said literally there was like eight inches of snow stuck to the front of this thing when he was traveling with it. So it didn't get a thorough bath or cleaning when it got here, which is totally fine with me. But yeah, that's the reason why there's a little bit of a dirt buildup on the front of it. Um, all that said, if you are looking at one of these, definitely check the folks out over at ROA Off-Road in South Carolina. They were gracious enough to provide me one of their only units for a two-month evaluation. They brought it down here, uh, provided it to me at no charge, so I could really go through it, show you guys what it's all about. But more importantly, I didn't really get any training on this thing, which means that I'm learning as I go. I'm learning how to use it. I'm learning in many of the same ways a buyer may learn if this is like their first RV or the first one they've gotten into. So we're kind of going on this 
this journey together, which is kind of fun. Anyways, uh, I can't hitch up to it with a traditional hitch, of course, because you got this, but if you don't opt to upgrade to the mic hitch, you can use the two and five sixteenth inch articulating coupler that comes on it. And that might be enough for a lot of folks, but I'm definitely wanting to show you the difference here between the mic hitch, which is an Australian um, kind of fully articulating hitch versus the one that comes on it. And they keep that in the storage up front here. All right, so the mic hitch coupler is right here and it basically goes on a standard ball mount coupler this is a two inch shank for two inch receiver and you have your standard uh, inch and a quarter opening right here to be able to slot your your threads for the i guess the receiving end of your mic hitch so we're going to put this on the truck because that's what it's configured for and honestly after using it just once I see why people would want it. It is so convenient, and I will demonstrate that to you here in a second. So you're going to put it in your receiver, just like any other hitch. Pin it in place. There we go. Now what's cool about this is you can see this cupped or flared opening, and it's coned. So all you really have to do is get pretty close to this thing and this will slot right in basically you put it in there it's going to go up and it's going to lock in place and then you use that pin to pin it in place but uh, you have pr pretty much unlimited articulation here you can go side to side like this and you can go up and down right here because of that the two and five sixteenths inch coupler that comes on it only has fully side to side articulation. So it's not gonna have front and back articulation. So that's gonna be the big difference between these two couplers. This is definitely a heavy duty coupler, something that you might typically see on the front of like a dump trailer or a utility trailer. Um, but yeah, it gives you full articulation side to side for the RV, but not front and back like this, which means if you find yourself going up a really steep incline and the RV's behind you, you could still bind up on the ball. Whereas with this, because Again, it can articulate up and down as well as side to side. Very, very cool. Anyways, let's get this thing in place locked up and we'll show you what it's all about. Before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and I guess uh, pull up all my leveling jacks. This does have auto leveling on it, which is really, really nice. Plus a nice RV lock, door lock on it. Very, very, very secure friction hinge door the hinges probably one of the stiffest friction hinge doors i've ever seen and we're going to go in here we're going to get on the tablet and try to get this thing off the ground so let's lift up our steps close our door and turn on our tablet there it is. I'm going to try to get through this the way that they showed it to me. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is hit this down here. I'm going to go to the campfire picture. I'm going to go to retract, confirm, and it's making some clicking noises. Looks like the air suspension is raising up. That's cool, check that out. Let's see if anything's, okay, so the front tongue jack is raising up and all of my other leveling is retracting. That's kind of cool, so it lifted up the air suspension to take weight off of the leveling jacks it raised the front tongue jack, and then it lifted the front leveling jacks and the back leveling jacks. But it actually utilizes the air suspension in conjunction with jacks, which is pretty dang awesome, to be honest with you. And it's just insane how robust this thing is. Okay, so we are ready to hitch up. Everything's done, it's moving to travel height, or already moved to travel height. I hear suspension doing some 
interesting things. Yeah, suspension's actually dropping back down right now. So it's moving to its traveling height position with air suspension. That is, that is insane. Okay, lets you know your air pressure. The front is, appears like it's retracting. So the front's coming down, probably to the last position we had it. All right, and I can probably drop that down some more, but it's in auto mode, so this button may not work. Yeah, that button's not gonna work until we switch it to manual mode. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna switch it to manual mode and then I can drop the front jack down either from the tablet or from the button on the actual front right here. So. One of the cool things about a tractor is I can actually use the back three-point connection here, lower it down, pin it in place, and lift it up um, very, very easily. So I can kind of drop this down, get it in a position that I'm comfortable with, that way I don't have to actually extend or retract the jack when I uh, back the tractor up to it. So that's gonna be really nice. Okay, very cool. And I wanna see something here. So that's not steel, that's why it's not sticking, but that's kinda cool, huh? Tablet's magnetic on the back. It's not very strong if you're gonna put it on something like this, but in terms of uh, the inside mount, it docks to it very, very well. All right, let's go ahead and get hitched up. Okay, so I'm locked in place. If I lift this handle up now, it's gonna uncouple. So you wanna pin it by dropping this pin in and then locking it in place right here. Now there is no way to uncouple the two. So you can see how you have articulation here, both this way as well as side to side. Very cool. Let's get this thing moved. And you'll see where I'm moving it and why in a second. Okay, let's watch this get lifted up. We are off the ground. Time to get going. Okay, so be honest with yourselves. How many of you never thought in a lifetime that my bad boy, what is it, 3026H tractor would be able to move this thing around all on its own? That's pretty insane, isn't it? All right. I think it's got like 900,000 pounds worth of, of capacity back there, but check this thing out. We're hitched up to it. Just looking at my trees real quick because I certainly don't want to rub any trees, which I haven't done, thankfully. All right. Everything's looking good. I got to take it around this turnaround right here. I'm going to be putting it right over there. So, yeah, this ought to be interesting. My main concern is some of the heights of the, uh, the branches over here because I don't want to hit anything. So I'm gonna have to kind of be eyeballing it the whole time I'm moving it. And hopefully we don't make contact with anything. Okay, so there you have it. We got it parked right where I want it.
Well, I gotta admit, the coupling and decoupling portion of this is ridiculously simple. Uh, if you've ever had a trailer that you can literally decouple that quickly before a coupler, let me know. Um, I've used just about every type of coupler there is out there, and none of them are that quick or that painless. That was really cool. I know a big part of it is the fact that I have a three-point in the back of the tractor where I can just lower it down, know when there's slack in it, and then, you know, pull it off. But that was, you gotta admit, that was pretty painless. That was pretty cool. Anyways, yeah, this thing worked out really, really well. My little hitch attachment to my three-point on my Spico uh, e-hitch, which is super cool. But we have this exactly where we want it now. Let me grab the tablet, which I set up here. So let's go ahead and get this thing leveled out. Go to auto, level, slide to confirm. And you should see the airbags do some pretty cool things here. Right now it's lowering. No, it's raising. And it's lowering. I think it's doing a side to side thing at the moment. We'll zoom in on it so you can see what this looks like in real time. You may be able to hear the air inside of this area where the air compressor is. We got plenty of sun out here today, so I'm sure the, uh, the panels are getting a good amount of sun. And right where I parked it, there's nothing blocking it except maybe in the early, early morning. All right, I hear the air compressor kicking in. You can see it raising up a little bit. All right. Yep, front tongue jack. And then once that levels it, front to back, I think that stabilizer or the rear one, one of those two is gonna go down next. Pretty cool, huh? Especially because you're doing it all from the, the keypad. And it's quick. This is a, a very quick system. It's not, not nearly as, uh, as slow as some of them. It's probably on par with like a hydraulic system you might see on a fifth wheel. And the back ones are going down. This is pretty dang cool. I think we're all done. I don't hear anything making any noise anymore. All right, so we're leveled. We're in a good spot now. We're gonna open this thing up, and in the next video, we're gonna go over the interior as well as the exterior, give you guys a good overview of what's on top. I wanted to get it moved for now, just so it's all prepped for it. Uh, we have like three or four trips just planned here in the next like two weeks. So we're definitely gonna use the heck out of this thing. Uh, not Moab type terrain, not the stuff you see on the graphics on the side, but we're definitely gonna take it out to some really cool, beautiful areas and enjoy this and document it just so you guys are able to see what this thing's all about. Again, huge shout out to the folks over at ROA Off-Road in South Carolina who actually carry this. If you're looking for any of their other brands like Dweller and Patriot and Romer One, they have those at their, uh, their Utah location just south of Salt Lake City. Um, definitely check them out. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in uh, learning more about the products they carry as well as the pause guys if you haven't had a chance please take a moment subscribe to my channel give me a thumbs up and we'll talk to you again very soon